Hi everybody, Crafting Journey here. That journey chick on Instagram. Ah, oh, the cat. I straightened this rug out back here at least three times this morning because I'm like, people are going to think I just live in a messy house. But you see what happens to the rug. <laughs> Two seconds after I straightened it out, they're like diving into it. Yeah, so much for that. You know what? It's World Cat Day. So we're going to celebrate these two special kitties. Anywho, um, we'll start by getting our planner out. Yes, I'm still in a sling. I want to let my uh, elbow rest. Elbow, it's not my elbow, it's my shoulder. It's like right back in here. I'm going to let it rest a little longer. Last night I was just sitting there crocheting. I'll show you what I crocheted, maybe tomorrow. I'm still working on it. And it's not a hat. No. I have plenty of hats, although I probably will make some more hats. Um, just not today. It's a blanket. I'm working on a blanket. A lap blanket, not a king size, a lap blanket. Okay. Today is the 16th. Oh, we have to decorate tomorrow. So let me just tell you, first of all, um, if you're enjoying the content of my channel, please don't forget to hit the like button and then take him to the Humane Society and let him adopt a cat today. But uh, no kittens. Don't don't tell him not he can't have a kitten. Yeah, he might cry, but you know, that's okay. Also, please consider subscribing and ring the notification bell when you want to be notified when I have another video or maybe when I do a pop-up live or an unboxing. You just never know what's going to happen on my channel. I do post daily, Monday through Saturday. So Saturday is kind of an optional thing, but I'm posting today. It's Saturday. I'm going to tell you another Alaska true crime story. So I can't really write too well, but we're going to, uh, what was yesterday? I forget. We're going to go here. World, world cat day and what's over here? forget I always forget oh now I remember because I looked I cheated okay today is Saturday the 16th okay the other thing that's going on this weekend tomorrow I will have a live at 11 a.m central um this is my monster mash collab with jennifer roberts i was not in her live last night i just didn't feel up to diamond painting didn't feel up to company i hope you guys can understand some days are like that you know you just that's it anyway but we're gonna have a good time tomorrow and then four o'clock tomorrow i have a zoom if you want to take part in the zoom you are welcome to the link will be in the the Facebook group, the Crafting Journey Facebook group. If you're not a part of the Facebook group, please consider joining. Just have to answer a couple of questions. Then you can go in, get the Zoom link, and come in and say hello to me. It's always fun. It really is. We have a good time in the Zooms. Now, I need a pen. Oh, I wanted to show you guys. Yes, you've probably seen them. The Retreat Pen. This was a Retreat exclusive pen that was made by Tia, my good friend Tia. Tia's Crazy Craft Addictions. Isn't that gorgeous? It's red, black, and white. And I took the tip that she gave me out because I want to put my own tips in there. I like the thin plastic tips as opposed to the thicker ones. And I have a box. I have a box of them here. I saved them. Let's get them out. Let's get one out. We're going to go with a three placer today, I think. Three placer. Why not? Hopefully, it'll just fit in there snugly, and it does. That's nice. Sometimes, if they don't, if you have a pen and you want to put this in and out and it doesn't, it's too loose. Just wrap a little bit of washi tape. Let me show you. Just wrap a little bit of washi tape around the tip. Not a lot, just a teeny tiny bit. And then it'll fit nice and snug in there. But I don't think I need it here. All right. We 
we need wax, wax, we need wax. Here we go, wax. I use this quite cold wax. How is everybody today? Are you guys, what do you guys got planned for the weekend? Don't say watching Rebecca, because that cannot be your only plan. Um, are you crafting? Are you watching TV? Are you cleaning house? I have to do laundry. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> I haven't done laundry since I got back from the retreat, so it's time. <sighs> yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay. Got that loaded up. I think it needs a little bit more. There we go. I might pop into a Zoom. I don't know. We'll see. Boy, that doesn't want to stay in there, does it? Come on. Go in. <laughs> you just got to kind of get it to load in there. These are the cutest pens, uh, honest to God. Tia did a great job. She has an Etsy shop. I don't know if it's open right now. She may be restocking, but uh, she does she does a little a great job with her pens. It's sparkly. And if you use your imagination, some of it is pink. Yep. I have I said how much I love this container. I really do. I love it. I have like distracted by diamond wax in there. I don't know what they call that kind of wax, but then I have this. This is also from her distracted by diamonds apricot chamomile. I wasn't crazy about this because you have to like put it under your boob to warm it up. Yeah, I have some more of that. I don't know what the smell is. Anyway, then I've got this. Um, what was this called? Super sticky, I think. Uh, loopy wax. Yeah, I've got some stickers here. I have a, my little measuring tape loom, for loom knitting and crocheting. And some loose pens up here at the top. Tweezers. Yeah, you can just kind of like throw a few things in there. Where's the lid? Oh. I have the sling on. I can use my hand. But I have the sling on to remind me not to be heroic. <laughs> like taking out the garbage, things like that. You know, because I just do it so automatically. So I'm trying to remind myself, do not lift that arm. Oh, my God, you should have seen me trying to brush my hair. Oh, you talk about painful. Oh, my God. So if it's still bad on Monday, I'm going to make an appointment with the doctor. But I, I got to find out somebody who does shoulders because every orthopedic does a different part of the body. So I'm sure I can call some of my orthopedic friends and ask them, you know, who do you know that does... That doesn't want to go in. That does shoulders. Okay, well, we're just going to set it off to the side. Forget about that for now. Now, we need a tray. <laughs> I'm really going strong here, aren't I? We need a tray. Let's talk about World Cat Day for a minute. So, you know, I hope that in your area they have a catch and release program. Because that, this is kind of the day to talk about that. That's, that's really what you need to do with feral cats. I lived in this area in Florida, Port Charlotte, that many years ago, it had been hit by a hurricane. So a lot of people lost their homes, lost their animals, but all the, out of it came all these feral cats. There was just wild cats everywhere. And you cannot adopt these cats. They They've grown up in the wild. They're used to the wild. They they do not make good house pets. They don't get along well beside humans. They're used to being in the wild. Um, so what these programs do is they catch them. They sterilize them, either spay or neutered. They clip their ear. They just do a little clip or t clip the side of the ear so that they know who's been neutered and who hasn't. And um, then they really, they actually vaccinate them as well. And then they put them back in the wild to live. But if they happen to end up in a shelter, those are not the ones you want to adopt. Them. Just saying. Um, if there's a stray that is at a shelter, then please, please adopt it. Or a kitten. If it's, it's under 12 weeks, adopt the kitten. 
I have had so much fun with my kittens. Oh my God. Uh, they are, they've brought so much joy in, into this house. They really have a lot of angst too, but uh, joy <laughs> nonetheless. They're super cute, aren't they? All right. I'm working on Monster Mash today. Please tell me if you're going to go adopt a kitten. Yay. I know Crashly's got lots, lots and lots. I don't even know how many she's got in her house right now. I really don't. I want to say 13. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure about that number. Uh, but I think some of them are have been have homes that they're going to, which is a good thing. Because that's a lot of cats. It's a lot of cat litter you know, that you got to clean out. Yes, it is. I'm diamond painting with my left hand. So it's going to be slow going. But I can do it while I talk to you. <laughs> it's, it's not very not very artful here, is it? Because I am not left-handed. But I'm I'm putting some drills down. Come on, go down. Oh, I didn't put anything, any wax in the tip of the pen. Well that that might have helped. I've got some pink wax right here that I can just quickly put into the tip of the pen. This is, oh, are you guys buying from Diamond Art Club this morning? I want the cat, the one that's taking the cat nap. I want that one, but I'm not spending any money today. I spent money at the retreat and, you know, I made some money, spent some money. I need to spend a little money and I got plenty of diamond paintings. So, but that, it's another Gary Patterson and I really love Gary Patterson. I got to finish the Who's Your Doggy one that I started at the retreat. Yeah, I always have these grandiose ideas of how much I'm going to diamond paint. And it doesn't usually end up that way, right? We're supposed to be starting the mystery diamond painting here um, sometime in November. Uh, provided everybody has their painting. I haven't got my painting yet. Crashly is buying my painting. So it should be a doozy. <laughs> you never know what Crashly's going to do. Let's talk about Judge, Jury, and Journey. And did I mention the person that came up with that name? Um, her name is Alec. Alex. Alec. Anyway. Uh, they were at the retreat. And so we got to talk and I taught, uh, taught him how to reloom knit. And uh, they did a great job. Uh, and really seemed to enjoy it. Uh, so I think uh, they'll probably continue. And, you know, it was nice to see the person that named my little spot, Judge Jury and Journey. I'm like, where have you been? Um, I think uh, they explained that they had a job <laughs> now. So, you know, real life gets in the way of YouTube. I understand. I do. So why is my, oh, maybe I need to shave. Anyway, let's, let's do Judge Jury and Journey. Yesterday, hey, Nicholas Cruz, this is the guy that went into uh, South Florida High School, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, and started shooting everybody. Um, he, I think he is charged with 17 counts of homicide. Um, yesterday, he was in court uh, pleading guilty to some other charges that he had. Now, the news agencies are all saying, oh, he's going to plead guilty to the homicide charges. I don't know that that's true. So he was in court yesterday pleading guilty to um, aggravated assault on a law enforcement officer. Apparently, after he was arrested, and this guy's not, he's not a big guy. You know, he comes into the courtroom yesterday. Like, <laughs> they dressed him up like he was Harry Potter. He had these big old thick glasses on and a sweater vest, you know, I, nobody wears this kind of stuff anymore, but uh, you know, he looked like a real nerdy guy, red hair, like, 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 or maybe Weasley, Ron Weasley from the Harry Potter, with the Harry Potter glasses. I don't know. It was really weird. So they bring him in and he does plead guilty to uh, this aggravated assault on a law, law enforcement officer. So what happened is after he's arrested for the homicides, Apparently, he just beat the crap out of one of the police officers. 
he t he stole the guy's taser and hit him over the head with it. Um, like a little adrenaline rush there, you think? Because he's I didn't think he was big enough to do that, but he did. So he pled guilty to, the, to that. There were some lesser charges that he also pled guilty to. He could get a maximum of 15 years in prison for just those charges alone. But the judge uh, held off sentencing till a later date. So she did say before court ended that they were going to pick a jury next week. His main attorney was not present. He has He's out of town and he's supposed to be out of town next week. He had some um, associates there in the courtroom with him and his lead attorney was on a Zoom uh, so he could listen in. And he says, listen, I, I'm going to be out of town next week. And she, the judge was not having it. She's like, I made this very clear that next week we are picking a jury in this homicide case. So, but that now the news agencies are reporting that he is going to plead guilty to the homicide charges. I didn't get that from what I was watching. I watched the entire hearing. I never heard him say anything about that. He was just pleading guilty to those law enforcement aggravated battery charges. Nothing about the homicide. That supposed to be, they're, they're supposed to be picking a jury for that next week. Now, if he does plead guilty, they'll still have to pick a jury to see if he gets the death penalty because the judge doesn't have the ability to decide that on her own. So, uh, yeah, Harry Potter's going to be sentenced. His name is Nicholas Cruz. I should, I should call him by his proper name. Then we have the Gabby Petito case. Um, no new information in that case whatsoever. Still looking for Brian Laundry. They brought out cadaver dogs, um, maybe to see if he's dead somewhere, and uh, that no luck with that. So then, I have, now I have a true crime Alaska story for you. This might be the last Alaska one. We're, then we'll find another state to pick on. How about that? What state should I pick on next? Anyway, we have Alaska. This is, uh, there's a couple of cases that are involved in here. The first one um, is the case of Brian Parodi. He's, uh, he's, in, he's in high school. The victim, his victim is in high school. They're both uh, high school jocks, so to speak. Brian Parodi, he's very athletic, good looking, very good looking, kind of the class clown. Um, he's got a girlfriend that he's just absolutely obsessed with. You know, he's always bringing her flowers and um, stuffed animals and sneaking over to her house and going into her bedroom. And like, he's just really super obsessed with this girl. Then there's this other guy and his name is Johnny Jackson. He goes to the same high school and he doesn't really have a girlfriend. He's dating this one girl. They've gone to the movies a couple of times, held hands, nothing serious. Um. But Brian Perotti's girlfriend decides she's going to accuse him of sexual assault. She actually says, Johnny Jackson sexually assaulted me. But then when um, the authorities come and they try to get her to press charges, she's like, oh, no, 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 I, no, no, he didn't, he didn't. And Johnny, of course, denied it. He said, no, I, I didn't do that. So what do you think happens? Well, Johnny disappears. Now, this is in Fairbanks, Alaska. Um, Johnny disappears. People kind of know that if you disappear in Fairbanks, you know, or any surrounding area, you're not likely to be found alive. They look for Johnny and look for Johnny. And finally, one of Brian's acquaintances hears him say that, you know, he, he did it. You know, he killed Johnny. So the police get involved and he says, no, 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 I, I didn't kill Johnny. Um, but I was really mad at him and I did go over his house, you know, but I, I, I didn't do it, you know. So they get this other guy to assist them, the friend, and he gets Johnny to tell him where the body is. So they send troopers out there, helicopters, the whole thing, and he's in this river. And they find him, and of course he's deceased. He had been shot twice in the head. They go to 
Brian's house. They find a gun in his nightstand along with a note. Basically, the note is confessing that, you know, he was going to kill Johnny uh, for something that happened to his girlfriend. He took something special away from me and I'm going to get it back and so on and so forth. So he gets sentenced to 99 years in prison and he's sent to a prison that is in the little town of Seward, which is about 500 miles south of Fairbanks called a Spring Creek Correctional Facility. So he's there, he's serving his time. So the next case also happens in Fairbanks. Um, now the first case, the case with Brian, that happens back in 1999. Then there's a case that happened in 1988, Shirley Conrad. Um, she's the mother of six, she's newly divorced, the kids are all grown, they're out of the house, and she is just, just this beautiful woman. And she's like coming into her own. She's, you know, her husband is now living in Seattle, Washington, and she's here by herself. And, you know, now she's going to sow some wild oats, you know, she's, <laughs> but unfortunately, someone that goes out to visit her finds her body outside. She's living in a trailer, finds her body outside the trailer, and she's deceased. So they also find on the scene a very distinctive shoe print, both in her house and outside of her house, they find this shoe print. And they also, on her, they, uh, on her hands, they find this very long curly hair. Now, she had short hair, so this hair was not from her. So they knew they had two very, very important clues. So they start asking around to the neighbors, you know, and, you know, you know do you guys know anything? What, you know, what, did you hear anything? And they keep, this one name keeps coming up. You know, this guy, he's got a record. He's sort of a tough guy. He's sort of the bad guy and around. You know, we all try to avoid him. And his name was Chris Marcy. So they go over to talk to Chris Marcy. And every time they go to talk to him, he's not home. But what they do find is that they, that shoe print is in front of his house in the snow. There's the exact same shoe print. So they're like, oh, I think we have our guy. So uh, finally, they, they stake out the place and he finally comes home. They're able to interview him. They're able to get him to confess. Um, the hair was a match to his hair. He had long, curly hair. And he is sentenced to 189 years, both for the murder and the sexual assault of Shirley Conrad. So he goes to this same place. He goes to Spring Creek Correctional Facility. So he's uh, he makes friends with Brian Perotti, and they come up with this plan. They're going to escape. Now they fit. They find out that there's a part of the fence uh, where the sensors are not working properly, and the prison had recently gotten rid of all their dogs. They didn't have any of the canines out there. And there was this, they knew that their part of the fences sensors were down. So they go to the wood shop and get wire cutters. Then they take white sheets to disguise themselves in the snow. They cover themselves in these white sheets and they go out and they cut a hole in the fence and they escape. So now Brian and Chris are on the run they didn't run for long because this prison is surrounded by glaciers. There's nowhere to run. The only way you can run is to find the main road. Now, if you can get on the main road and not be seen and get past everybody and get get a certain distance past, then you're into these large uh, air glacier-filled area where you could never be found by anyone and you would probably die. It's that remote. So they break into a house, Brian and his friend, um, Chris, they break into a house and they steal a tent and some sleeping bags and some warm clothes and they start hiking, you know, up, up into that area. Apparently they did get past the main road and they're in this area where you could never be found. However, um, they're spotted by a helicopter the next day they see uh, a tent on the top of this mountain. 
So they have people, they have troopers that are approaching from the bottom part of the mountain, troopers that are coming down the top of the mountain, and they're on the side of the mountain. They realize that they're surrounded. They come out, they raise their hands, we surrender. So they were sentenced to one year of solitary confinement for breaking out of prison, these two guys. So they are still in prison serving their sentence. And um, I believe the prison guards learned a lesson in security that night because this was supposed to be a place that you could not break out of. Well, they did it quite easily. So I'm sure they beefed up security after that. So that's the story for today. I'll see what I can come up with for Monday. We'll try a different state. I, I might go with a different state. Maybe I'll stay in Alaska. I think Alaska stories are pretty cool. Because they're always full of snow and darkness. This place, Fairbanks, where all this took place, they only have like three hours of daylight every day. And it's like mostly dark and cold there. Not really good for your mental health, I, would, I might add. But um, yeah. Look at me diamond painting with my left hand. It's probably really crooked. Oh, my word. <laughs> I think it is. And when you put a drill down on a TSA canvas, it stays. Oh, my gosh. You cannot, it, you know, it's not one of those canvases where you can slide stuff around. Oh, well, it's just going to have to stay that way. It's just going to stay that way. So before we go to this day in history, let's, I'm just going to say, I this is episode 195, five more episodes, and then we're going to celebrate my 200th episode of Crafting and Crime. Maybe I'll have a giveaway. How cool would that be? What should I give away? Crafting and Crime. I'm going to think of something good. Yep. I will. Anyway, this day in history, the Walt Disney Company was founded. Yes. October 16th, 1923. Now, I found this very interesting that Walt Disney's first films, they weren't feature films, they weren't full-length films, they were shorts, were Alice in Wonderland. And I've been doing the Year of Alice. So who knew that Alice was really where he got his start? And then in 1928, he comes out with Steamboat Willie, which is where we meet Mickey Mouse. And then his first feature-length film, which featured 300 illustrators. It went 400% over budget. 400% over budget. Oh, my God. But it was a huge hit. It was Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Can you name the Seven Dwarfs? I, let me think. Hold on. Dopey, sleepy, doc, grumpy, happy. Well, that's five. Who am I missing? Sneezy? Was there a sneezy? I don't know. Sleepy? Sleepy? Sneezy? Farty? I don't know. <laughs> I digress. <laughs> what? I have no idea. What is this? Audible original, The Sandman, Act Two. It's only a dream. Ooh, that sounds cool. I like scary stories. Ooh, I should come up with some Halloween haunted stories, shouldn't I? We should go away from the true, true crime for the rest of the, you know, until we get another trial. And I'll do spooky, scary stories. Now that would be fun. What do you think? Do you want another true crime or do you want a scary story? Let me know in the comments. I love your comments. I read every one of them. And don't leave, don't forget to leave the like button. You know, hit that like button today because you're going to take them to a shelter. And don't let him adopt a feral cat. Have him and tell him he can't have a kitten either. No, no kittens for the like button. But make sure you hit the like button. Yeah. Okay, guys, that is the show for today. Yeah, I know I didn't do a whole lot of diamond painting, but um, I'm going to sit in my chair, relax. I can see I can do some crochet here and then my shoulder is not moving. Um, yeah, unfortunately. And 
yeah, I'm only like halfway done with this painting. Um, but I'm thinking, you know, if this is still hurt on Monday, I will, I'll go to the doctor. Maybe I'll just get a little shot to make it feel better. And uh, that's it. Well, I'll be done with it. You know, like a cortisone, maybe some cortisone and I'll be fine. And I can like start dance. Oh, that hurts. Start dancing again. <laughs> All right. So guys, I will see you tomorrow at 11 central time for craft with me when, uh, not craft with me Wednesday for my live. This, <laughs> I can't think straight. I'm on medication. Yeah. Let, let's try that again. 11 central time tomorrow. <laughs> um, for my live, we're going to do monster mash and you never know which guests are going to show up. Um, Jen, maybe. Tia, maybe Crashly if she's awake, maybe Lindsay, you never know. So, or maybe Mickey, you never know. Everybody's doing the monster match. The monster match. It was a graveyard smash. The monster match. Okay, bye. I love you all. Take care.